Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. This is a beginner sew and sew tutorial. It may be too easy for you, or it may be just what you need to kickstart your new sewing business. Everyone uses dish towels, and I mean everyone, right? <laughs> I hope they do. We are going to take really pretty dish towels that are a tad bit pricey, but not bad. We are going to attach those dish towels to these very inexpensive square pot holders that I found at the Dollar Tree. They come in packs of two, so that makes them 50 cents each. This is a name brand dish towel right here, but I absolutely love the prints on these dish towels. I do think these gorgeous dish towels will sell. You get a pack of four of these, which will give you eight sets of towels because we're going to cut those in half. It's $12 and 70 some cents, making each hanging towel approximately $2 in product. If you stay till the end, I'll let you know where you can get your hands on one of these dish towels that I made. Enough talking already. Let's get busy. Sewing and selling hanging dish towels. Grab your set of two pot holders and one of your towels. Get all these little plastic things out. Also, I do tear these out because I don't like these tags in there. You may have a few threads from the tag, so what you're gonna do is just snip those out. There is a right and wrong side to these pot holders. The wrong side would be the side where the tag was and it also has where the loop is, the raw edge of the loop right there. This is the inside of our project. And you'll see here, they never trimmed the threads off. So you'll wanna do that too, just to neaten up your work. One thing I want you to note is whatever color the pot holder is, is the color of thread that you're going to use in the top of your machine. The bobbin color doesn't really matter, just the top. What's nice about these dish towels is they've already found the middle for us, so no need to really fuss with that. What you'll do is just open it up, already folded just the way it is. You'll see a crease mark right there. All I want you to do is follow the crease mark and just cut it right in half. You can use a rotary cutter too, up to you. We'll set one aside because we're just gonna work on one. You will notice a bit of fraying maybe on some of these. This one's not too bad, just a few little frays from the terry part of the dish towel. This particular towel actually has the hang tag from Pioneer Woman already in it. It's the little twill tape that's on there. So that'll be cute too, whoever gets that one. This is so simple, you're not even gonna believe it. Now what you'll do is just open it up and lay it flat in front of you. What's great about these towels and the way that they're folded is there is a crease down two sides right here. So you'll have three panels, this one, this one, and this one. And this is going to make it really easy to make your pleat. So here's the three panels, and you can see that these crease marks are right here. All you're going to do is pinch right where those creases are just like that. And you see when you do that, what happens? It kind of puffs up like that. And then you just wanna go a little bit more, a little bit more, until you have something kind of like that. So you can see there, I've just lifted that up. And then it's laid back down. The way that you lay this now will determine how well this flares out. You can see right here, you see that nice flare that it has? It's not laying perfectly straight down like this. We gave it a little kick on the ends. It gives it a more full look. For this next step, we're going to know that we have the distance from here to here that matches the pot holder. You're going to lay it right on top like that. Now what this tells us is this is peeking out a little bit here, so it's a little bit too big yet on the ends. So what I'll do is lift that out and I will come in just a touch more. Now all I'm doing is sort of pushing this inward and that shortens everything up this way. Now when I lay it down, you can see 
It's just above that area. The key for me is making sure that this seam where we're gonna sew in the ditch right here with our red thread, once we get everything the way we want it here, we want to make sure that this edge runs right along that area. So that way we'll be able to tack these together, those ends. You can see here, if I lift it up, I have plenty of room right here. So you can take this off, set it aside, grab a couple pins, and carefully, because you don't want to take that pleat out that you just put in, and you're going to pop some pins. Put a couple in there because we don't want this to move. Keep the pins about an inch or so from this edge because we're going to be trimming this. If you need to draw a line on there, go ahead. I'm going to eyeball it because I really do think it'll be okay. So I came around this side so you could see a little bit better. This, make sure that that's kind of puffed out there. It's like a little skirt or something. And you can see the edges right here of this. This is totally uneven. And even that is, it's not meeting up. So you can see how far you have to come in with this rotary cutter. All I'm gonna do is start here. And you can see just how much I cut off. It's just enough to make that a nice curve. It doesn't have to be a really perfect curve, but it has to be in the vicinity of a curve. And you can see here, I'll show you the back. Now you can draw a line if you feel like that would really help you, it's up to you. For my beginner sewists out there, what I would like to see you do next is take this to your sewing machine with these pins still in here and stay stitch this pleat together. If you're a beginner, that would be great to do that first. And then you can either zigzag stitch along here so it doesn't fray, or you can surge around that entire edge while it's pinned here. So here I'm just going to lift up my presser foot to my serger. And I'm going to, now see, see there. If I would add a stay stitch in there, it might not have flipped up on me, but that's okay. For any of you that do have a serger, my knife is down because I don't want to cut any more off of this area. Just go nice and slow until you get the hang of the curve and just follow the curve. Make sure everything's laying flat because you don't want a flipped up cleat in the back. Again, I'm pulling that top pin off so it doesn't get caught in my needle. Here we have our pot holder. We're going to lay it on top there and we can see that that fits pretty good along the sides there. And remember, we want to follow this stitching in the ditch, our pot holder in red right there, so that we don't see the thread and so that it connects the back here. So we have to make sure the back is up on this area right here where we're going to stitch in the ditch. And all stitching in the ditches, if you don't know, is taking an already stitch that's there and restitching on top of it. It's like following the same path that their needle took and thread took. And you can see here, this is the front and we're just going to lay it down. And you think you have it where you'd like it, grab a couple pins. Now I'm going to pin away from this ditch where this stitch is. Let's flip it on the back just to make sure everything's good back here. So I think this one needs to come over just a touch. And you can do that simply by just giving that a tug. It's very forgiving. So that way you'll catch that in the stitch there. All right, let's take it over to the sewing machine. You'll first want to start sewing right along this side edge, back stitching right there. And then you'll sew right in this ditch all the way around in the ditch till you get to here. And then you're going to back stitch so that it catches that in there.
just follow right along in that ditch. And it's okay if you get out of the ditch a little bit. I mean, honestly, sometimes I get out of the ditch because I really, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. <laughs> and then just lift and turn as you go around those corners. And now once you know that you're connected on the end right along here, along that side, you can pull out your pin because things get a little bulky with that pin in there. And then everything lays nice and flat. And then just con whoop. and then just continue. Pull out that pin. Cut off all of the extra threads. And you will have that lip there, but you know what? It is what it is. This is not going anywhere. Once it's attached, it's attached. So here you can see just how cute this is. Now we can do a couple things at this point. You can hang on the loop right here that actually came with the pot holder. You can hang it there, or you can put the Velcro right here, which I'll show you here in a second. It hangs perfectly on the bar on your stove. Isn't that one cute? This one I also got at Walmart as well. Let me show you how I put the Velcro on. It's a no-sew Velcro. It's permanent, you can wash, dry, do whatever you want with it, but it does take 24 hours to cure on the fabric. So just keep that in mind if you are selling. You don't wanna make it and give it hot off the presses and sell it to somebody and they wash it or whatever. Here's what the package of the sticky back for fabric Velcros look like. Here's what the package looks like. And it is permanent. I'm telling you, it's an awesome product. Now this is the white one. They also sell black. Now I have two left in the black and I'm going to use it on this one. Nobody's ever going to see the color, so it doesn't really matter, I don't think. Flip it on the back. You're going to take one of the sides of the Velcro and unstick it. See there, it's just a it's pretty good sticky too. I just eyeball this part, but you do it how you want. If you want to measure that, go ahead. Right there. And push it down firmly. Unstick the other Velcro. Stick that right on top of the other oval. The next thing you're going to do is just lift this. I want, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to come just above where this surged edge is, keeping it nice and straight because once it's stuck, it's pretty much stuck. Make sure this is free from any lint too. You don't want to get that lint caught up on that sticky. So just line it up, and when it gets to be about right there, and you're just going to hold pressure. And there you have that. And then that bar goes right in the center right there. How darling is this towel? I mean, for real. This little towel holder, easy. It took us just a few minutes to attach it, that's all. Let's see how it looks on the stove. How cute is this darling towel hanging on my stove? Oh my word. Hanging towels similar to this one will sell for a range of eight to $20 online. Now mine's not cured yet, of course. Remember I said 24 hours, so you might wanna just let that sit. Not only is it functional, but it is super cute. Since I made more than a few of these, as you can see here, hanging on my design wall, I'm going to have links to purchase these in my info box down below this video. Take a look at your screen right now. I have hand-picked my best sew and sell videos just for you. Go ahead, click on one of them, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.